this will only work for the premium and the plus model, not the advanced, um, because there's a, a, a there's more guts up here. So the um, the cam port is in a different location. That's where the giraffe is going. So you can see it. This little latch, this right here, this little part. You can put your finger right up in here, pull it down, and that'll pop out there. You grab this, and this gets pulled towards the dash. Let's see if we can get that down towards the dash here. There we go. The click, and it's off. All right. Now that's done. We gonna this right here. Which I believe, like I said, this I believe it's called a can port. This is what goes to your like your um your sensors, your camera, all that good stuff. So this gets removed. All right. We got the giraffe right here. Um, in the panda. So, giraffe panda. I recommend you put these together first because it's a firm fit, and you it kind of feel like you're bending the actual unit to get it in there. So put that in first, like this. Then you'll take this cable right here and install it in this port. But before I do, I do that, I want to show you the switches. All right. The only one you need on when running the system is three. Okay. That's what's going to power the Panda. And that power is going to send power and information to the Eon itself. All right. Um, you turn three off and, and one, two, and four on, you want to reactivate your actual manufacturer system, all right? Because um, if you don't and you unplug the Eon, um, it goes crazy. They get to start telling you everything that's turned off. All right. So now we take, where's that port? This, and this goes inside of here, like so. It's plugged in there. Now this goes here into this port right here right there in that port all right so now we're gonna connect it into the port take the usb cable it came with and plug that into the panda all right that's another thing we should probably should have did before we put it on was the USB is a little bit of a reach around. Um, and also we probably should have did the high precision GPS. Okay. There we go. So um, I would like to run the cable up here around like the, the edges here. But for now, I'm just gonna wrap it around my um, my sun visor. Um, before you mount to make sure you, the spot you're in has good reception. So this, will set itself like that in there. See that? And then I'm going to mount it where I kind of ruined the adhesive. Try to get this line back up. Okay. So they recommend you do it. This, the camera on here lines up as close to the camera here as possible when you dock it. All right. So I'm gonna go outside and show you guys where the camera's at and how close it is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and dock it first. I'm gonna go around and look on the house side. So you see the camera here? See that? Camera there. And we come down, there's that camera there. All right, so we lined up with that camera. Now, so this, plug the USB in the back of here, back of the Eon, dock it. Cable around. Now, the good thing, by the way, is the dock is just It's nothing but an adhesive GoPro mount. All right, guys, let me show you what it looks like um, when it's connected. Then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you have it disconnected um, without actually switching the toggles back. So this is what they connected. As soon as you power your car on, it's gonna say this. It's gonna um, have the camera on. It's gonna say, be ready to drive. Um, 
it's all your information so your storage your temp if you have a good GPS connection and you know you're connected to the system for um, self-driving if you get that screen I'm telling you to take over anytime now I'm gonna show it to you I'm gonna turn the car off and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's not connected now powering the car back on with the USB unplugged and now you're gonna see all these awesome error messages pre-collision Man, you see your manufacturer um, it's gonna go through a series lane departure alert and these won't stop so I'm gonna say it again if you want to run the um, self-driving only have switch three up and that's switched up towards the, the actual number so it's switch the switch up towards the three one two and four down if you don't want the auto driving on you switch one two and four up and that it goes back to your default settings. It won't auto drive for you. You won't get any error messages. You never know if you if your car's still on the warranty, how the dealership will react to this being off and you having all this stuff installed. They might try to avoid it or say any type of issues or because of you tampering. So I suggest you order a second one of these. Um, if you wanted to look neat, if you look up the stock number here, I actually put that in the description too. You can actually look it up via that stock number. And it's about 50 bucks for a replacement plate. I'm going to take a Dremel and cut around it so that um, the components will fit in it. That way it looks nice and neat and flush. And um, then when I go to the dealership, I just remove all the gear, put the the old plate right back on there. I suggest you do the same thing if you um, don't want any type of warranty issues. All right. Thank you.